how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so last time I said that we would be revisiting the multiverse <laughs> on oh, this one, sort of to do a condensed version of the much longer earlier vlog on the whole multiverse thing. Um, well, that and you know, I might have new things to say about it because I don't know what I said back then. I've not re watched that video anytime recently, so. I might say very similar things last time, but in a condensed form, I might say completely different things last time, but in a condensed form, who knows? So hopefully either way, it should be interesting, <laughs> she says. <laughs> okay, so what do I mean when I say, or when I'm talking about my multiverse? Um, well, I'm hoping that most of you kind of understand what a multiverse is. Um, I mean, a good example of how multiverses are or can be used in media is, is Rick and Morty, where it's literally lots of different realities and the different crazy things that can happen because all of these realities, um, and you know, you can transverse between the realities and, and stuff like that. And yeah, there's a lot of that within my multiverse as well. The idea is, you know, as well as having sort of separate realities within which stories can take place, there can be transversing between those realities by a certain characters in certain stories when the circumstances call for it. Um, I mean, it allows me perhaps to have different versions of the same character coexisting at the same time for different reasons, for different stories, um, and sometimes in the same story. Uh, so that can be quite fun. Um, my multiverse itself, um, each reality within the multiverse is made up of a realm, which is kind of the center of, centerpiece of that particular reality. And then up and down from that, there are connected planes. Um, this, this is sometimes quite literally like the heavens and the hells. Um, but depending on what reality you're in depends on exactly what those planes are and how those planes kind of affect um, the realm within the middle. And if they have that much of an effect on the realm within the middle, it, it sort of all goes into sort of alternate stuff that goes on. Um, quite often when I'm sort of dealing with a reality, I'm dealing with what's going on in the realm rather than what's going on in the planes. One of the sort of, I suppose, biggest exceptions to this rule would be, once again, the tail saga, where you get your realm, um, where sort of everybody has sort of originated from. <laughs> I'd like to say where most of the story happens, but a lot of the story happens um, in, in the tail saga happens actually in in uh, in Sil, which is a part of Gaia, <laughs> which is a plane of Gaia. <laughs> so technically, it doesn't happen um, in in the realm itself. But there, there you go. That's that's a good example. Um, you know, you've got the realm, which is a sort of the Earth bit. Um, of the Tale Saga, and then you've got uh, Sil, which is a plain part of that, and then you've got the stuff that happens, this is a little bit spoilery, the stuff that happens on Gaia itself, um, which again, Gaia itself is something slightly different, and I will have to recover this in one of those, those one of these future vlogs um, to sort of explain what Gaia is. Um, but Gaia itself is sort of a plane and a realm at the same time, because Gaia is this confusing thing <laughs> that was left over from the destruction of the original uh, original universe. And that's the other thing, my, my multiverse wasn't always a multiverse. It began as a singular universe and then because of particular events um, that sort of happened, everything had to be built again. And when it was built again, in order to make it harder to destroy, it was created as a multiverse because you can't simultaneously destroy all these individual universes um, as easily as you can destroy a singular large universe. So it was basically a sort of preventative measure, but it allowed for this sort of division of reality and this division of, you know, this might be true here, but it's not true here. And this person is this person here, but in this version of events, they're actually this person. Um, so yeah, it can it can be quite interesting to sort of think of it like that. Um, but back to sort of the the, the tail side, yes, you've got like the bits that happen on, on Gaia, which is sort of 
tr sort of kind of transversing multiverses <laughs> slightly <laughs> in that one. Um, you've got stuff that happens on Sil, which is technically a, a plane uh, in and of itself. And then you get things that happen in sort of the, the higher places and the things that happen in like the lower places, which again, they're, they're planes, they're not, you know, the, the realm in which everything sort of originally takes place and, and where the characters sort of originally come from. Um, so that's one of the times where I've actually kind of used the fullness of a particular reality in order to give different locations for the story and, and in order for different events of the story to kind of occur. Um, but most of the time when I'm dealing with a story, it's within the realm, within the reality. Um, so the r and series, although it mostly happens in space, it's all happening within the realm. <laughs> The, the space is is the realm. Yes, the planets they don't the planets don't count as their own individual realms. They are just planets within the realm, um, and, that, and the story itself happens within a quite expansive realm within that particular reality. But you don't get any of the you get a little bit, but mostly you don't get any of the plain stuff. It is all happening within reality. Um, likewise, Echo, which was the the book relief that kind of coincided with me restarting the vlogs or starting the vlogs last year um again that all happens within a, a realm because there's there's no need to sort of go outside of that however a particular character does go to a plane but because we're not with that or because echo is not with that particular character you the story itself kind of happens within the realm and she does contact that character whilst they're in the plane that they did go to <laughs> but um that is via a phone call and therefore the story itself still happens within the realm rather than going anywhere else um yeah so yeah <laughs> I, I hope this is making sense <laughs> i'm not sure how good a job i'm doing of explaining this and i probably maybe slightly contradicted my my uh, previous video because i'm never very good at deciding which bit is the reality and which bit is the realm and it's taken me sort of like a long time to kind of figure it all out and like even now I'm still kind of figuring it all out and, and how all sort of pieces together um which is why it's been quite good um Hyena Boy in particular and the project that I'm working on now they happen within disconnected realms um and the, the six disconnected realms is something that I have covered in a completely separate plug which may may need to cover again uh, but in short um they're essentially six six realities that well six six realms not necessarily the whole reality just the realm within the reality um that has become completely disconnected from each other and from the rest of the multiverse um and all the magic and everything that would have existed in those particular realms has been cut off and, and taken away or at least mostly cut off and taken away there are some sort of bits of it that sort of still seep through but the knowledge isn't there so it's not necessarily utilized in the same way it's not necessarily understood in the same way um it's definitely not as powerful as it as it would be if you know they had the full access to it um and you know high in boy definitely happens within one of those realities um so obviously because of that the current project happens within one of those realities so the the fact that they're sort of described both described as being magical realism, that's kind of where that kind of comes in because they are still canon stories to the multiverse. Um, Jay in particular is still a canon character to the multiverse. Um, it's just, you know, this is a part of the multiverse where the, the connection to everything else has been severed and, and the, the magic and the knowledge has been severed and, and lost. Um, not necessarily permanently and, and maybe sort of future points in their particular realms, um, you'll reach the point where it sort of does reconnect with everything else. But in terms of that story and that particular point in time in, in these stories, they're completely disconnected. So yes, there is this sort of ambience of nearly almost magical stuff that is kind of happening on the peripheries of the stories which in Hyena Boy much more so than in my current project can be left a bit more open to interpretation um it is certainly there because 
these are canon to the multiverse, they're just not canon to the pure fantasy parts. Well, they are canon to the pure fantasy parts, they're just not part of the pure fantasy parts. Um, but they are still canon to the multiverse, they, they are still canon characters to the multiverse, they're just not part of, you know, the pure fantasy stuff, and, and that's that's quite interesting because it means I'm having to work without the abundance of knowledge that my characters would usually have because they are connected to the rest of the multiverse, they do understand a lot of this stuff um, and have, like, names for it and words for it and they understand how everything fits together and, you know, it's nice to sort of just take a step back and kind of go, okay, if these people didn't have all these words and all this knowledge and all this know-how and this was kind of what they were presented with, how would they feel about it? How would they react to it? What, you know, what words would they come up with personally to kind of explain what was going on around them? Um, can it sort of be perceived as being potentially magical or potentially maybe there's something slightly wrong with them um so yeah it's definitely it's definitely interesting getting to do it from a slightly different viewpoint and looking at it in a slightly different way and I do appreciate the the current projects for that because I think sometimes I get so ingrained with all the complexities of the multiverse I forget that there are very simple stories you can tell within it because I've spent so long building up this multiverse and all its complex lore and everything else that sometimes I just need to take a step back from it and kind of go, well, actually, this is a perfectly simple story that I can tell. And yes, it's not full of magic like, you know, most of my stories tend to be, but that's OK. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that because it's still part of the multiverse. It's still canon to the multiverse. It's still you can sort of make the connections to various things and I'm still building the law, I'm just building it in a slightly different way because these characters don't have access to that great vast knowledge that I have. <laughs> so I understand what's going on with them, but they don't. And that might even give readers a better way into the multiverse than necessarily starting with, yeah, this is a whole load of law and craziness for you. Go have fun. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, the multiverse is something that I've been working on for a long time and a lot of it is stuff that I'm kind of like, yes, this is, this is exactly how it works, this is, I know exactly what's going on with it, I know, I can explain it really well, um, but it actually sort of sitting down and having to explain the multiverse as a, a whole concept like this isn't necessarily the easiest thing to do because how I sort of see it and, and picture it in my brain isn't necessarily something that I can sort of verbalise um, necessarily quite the way that, that I want to because I kind of understand like the mechanics of, of how it works and it's a very sort of visual mechanic for me. Um, and I sort of, even like when I'm getting characters themselves to sort of try and explain things, they're not necessarily explaining it in a way that shows that they necessarily <laughs> fully understand <laughs> because it, it's such an expansive thing and I think I think in some ways a multiverse kind of maybe has to be um, because if you're dealing with the idea that all things can be possible within this expanse of realities um, then there has to be allowance for things to sort of almost contradict themselves and things to not necessarily work 100% the way you think they should work because that's how they work everywhere else and yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah well I'm not sure what else I can say <laughs> I'm hoping hoping uh, that I've sort of explained this sort of okay and well. Um, clearly it's not a topic that I find particularly easy to kind of get across in a nice, clear, concise way because how my brain space sort of thinks about the multiverse is, is constantly in flux because the multiverse itself is constantly in flux. 
Um, it's as I, as I said before, it's certainly nice at the moment to be writing something where I can take a step back from the deep lore multiverse stuff and concentrate on what is essentially a much simpler story. <laughs> Not a simple story, but a simpler story in terms of lore and in terms of, of everything that's going on. And, um, and I like the characters and I like, yeah, I, I like dealing with the multiverse, but sometimes it's nice to step back and, and concentrate on a small story rather than the big overarching multiverse story, which sometimes goes on in my head. <laughs> anyway, I hope this has been sort of interesting um, and that I've been a little less rambly and babbly than I think I've been. I, I don't think I've done too well there, to be honest. Um, next time, we will be talking about one-off stories. That, that is the title that I have given the next vlog. Actually, technically speaking, I've done these two the wrong way around because when I checked my calendar after I said that this one was going to be multiverses, I realised that no, it's supposed to be the one-off and the multiverses are supposed to come after. But never mind. <laughs> we have done multiverses this time and next time we will do one-offs. Um, so I hope you guys have sort of found this one kind of interesting. I hope you're sort of looking forward to the next one and I will see you next time. See ya! <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!